Yes, I understand what you're talking about. I have heard many times that spirituality should be free of charge. But let's figure out what it is from an energy point of view. When we say the word spirituality, what is hidden behind these words? Spirituality is spiritual energy. Where do we get it from? Of course, from God, from the universe. And if we receive some energy, then it is logical that, according to the law of the conservation of energy, we should give something away. This is an unshakable law, a universal law, the law of conservation of energy. If you give something, then you get something in return. That is, there is an energy exchange. And how can we want to get something without wanting to give something in return? It's very selfish, don't you think? That's how people with great possessiveness usually think. This is the thinking of businessmen or people who are used to taking advantage of everything. I want to get something, but I don't want to give anything in return. There is an ancient parable that perfectly reflects the very law of sacrifice that we are talking about now. Do you want me to tell you? Excellent. Then imagine the following situation. There is a teacher, and next to him are his students. In his hands there is a glass with dirty, muddy water. The glass itself is also covered with dirt. The teacher takes some clean water and pours it into the dirty one. Naturally, the water overflows over the edges, remaining dirty and muddy. He asks his students, will you drink it? They say no. He says, that's good. He pours some water out of the glass, then takes some clean water and fills half of the glass. The water is still muddy and dirty. He offers it to the students, but they all refuse. He empties the glass and pours some clean water into that dirty glass. The water becomes dirty still because the glass is dirty after all. He offers them a drink and they say they would probably agree if they were very thirsty. Then he empties the glass again, washes it, takes some clean water and pours crystal clear water into the glass. Of course, everyone agrees to drink it. Would you drink it? Clean or dirty? Which would you choose? What does this parable tell us? It tells us that we cannot get something good without getting rid of the dirt that already exists. I think you have noticed that our external world in which we live is quite aggressive. There are constant conflicts and wars. People are constantly trying to snatch something from one another. Even this very wording that spiritually should be free of charge speaks of the mercantile nature of the world in which we live. Do you understand? That is why in this world we want to receive something all the time without giving anything in return. And being in this aggressive, dirty environment, unfortunately, we always get dirty. That's why by the end of the day you may feel bad. This is where stress, fatigue, nervous breakdown and depression come from. All this comes from the pollution of the emotional energy background in which we live. This pollutes our energy field and our aura. Hence all diseases, quarrels and conflicts arise too, by the way. So if you want to receive pure spiritual energy, like this pure water that the teacher offered, then you need to pour out all the negativity. What is it that you can give away? It's not necessarily money. The sacrifice can be absolutely anything. I can tell you about it a little later. The most important thing we need to understand is that if you fill a person who is already full, it just won't go inside. Do you understand? This is the law of sacrifice. You get as much as you give. This is a universal law. It is impossible to deny. But you can give not only money. First of all, we give our efforts. But this is a slightly different story. I want to give you an example. A situation that happened to one of our students. She came to the seminar, but she was planning on leaving a little early. Her mentor came up to her and said that she shouldn't go. She'd better stay at the seminar. To which she replied, I've got things to do, and categorically refused to listen to the conductor of power. Then he handed her a talisman cone, saying, 
It is a magical cone. It will protect you. He told her to take it with her and named the donation amount. The woman was surprised. She said, what do you mean? I need to buy a pine cone for money? I can find one in the woods. He said, no, no, no. You don't understand. It's a protective amulet, a talisman. It is necessary to make a donation so that everything is fine with you. It will protect you. She didn't believe it. She got into her car and drove to town, and the seminar was held in the country. The mentor prayed very much for her, because he saw that trouble was waiting for her. A terrible accident in which she could even die. He wanted to protect her by telling her to stay at the seminar, but she didn't agree. He offered her a magic talisman so that the amulet and the spirit of the amulet would protect her and save her, but she didn't go for it either. Then the mentor prayed very much for her so that no one would be injured in that accident. The accident happened. It was inevitable. It was karmically planned. It was possible to avoid it only by staying at the seminar under the protection of its field. But she didn't. No one was killed in the accident, nor in the car she had collided with. The woman herself remained alive too, but it was she who caused the accident. As a result, she was fined for damaging her own car and the car she'd crashed into. And do you know what happened? As soon as she saw the ticket, she almost went crazy. This was exactly the amount of donation that she was asked for that magic pine cone. Can you imagine that? The same amount to the last penny. After that, she called the mentor and asked for forgiveness. She said, I'm sorry, you were trying to protect me. I didn't listen to you. I realized that the power cannot be disobeyed. I should always follow the power. Because the conductors of power can hear spirits and we have no right to disobey the call of the spirits. We do what they tell us and then we transmit the will of the spirits to people. But unfortunately, a person is not always able to hear it. Therefore, as for the ideal that spiritually should be free, believe me, it is very materialistic even more so than the understanding of the universal law that you have to pay for everything in life. But the amount of this donation and what kind it will be, material or otherwise, is determined by the person himself. But it is necessary. This is a law that cannot be broken. And even if we try to do it, even if we try to fill a person who is already full, have you ever tried to help someone who didn't want your help? The person was not ready to sacrifice anything, he did not even ask you, yet you really wanted to help him. Has this ever happened? Did it work? That's what I'm talking about. It's unlikely. You can't help someone who doesn't want that help. Even asking for help is already a kind of sacrifice. Do you understand? It means stepping over your ego, over your pride, and asking someone to help you. Asking for help is the first minimal sacrifice, but there are others. Therefore, spirituality cannot be free. To receive clean energy, you must give away other energy that you have, more dirty energy. Only then does the correct energy take its place. If you liked this video or found it interesting, please leave a like. I will know that such topics are important to you, and I will record more such videos. And, of course, subscribe to the channel and ring the bell because there will be more videos. Stay tuned to learn about all the new videos that we post to our channel. There are a lot of interesting things here. Don't forget to share this video with someone who is really interested in it. See you soon!